So this is Griffiths Electrodynamics, problem 2.4. We're going to be finding the electric field at this point P, which is a distance Z above the center point of a, a wire, or um, a little uh, square loop of charge. Um, so this could be a charged wire or something like that. Um, but in this case, the charge is uniform along each of these sides. And so, yeah, our question is, what is the electric field up here at this point P? Now, um, Griffiths uh, allows us to use uh, example 2.2 uh, from the previous page. I've included that at the beginning of the video. Um, and what that is, is he finds the electric field from a finite line segment. Um, what does he call this? I think he calls it 2L. So this uh, line charge here is has a length of 2L, and it is a distance uh, Z uh, up to this point from the midpoint of this line charge. I'm not going to call it Z, though, because we're going to be using Z for this problem, and I don't want all the Zs to get mixed up. So um, let's call it Zeta. Or something. All right, so I'm just going to write down the result from example 2.2, which is this case, and then we'll see how do we translate that into this case of the the square. Um, basically, four of these line segments, right, in um, on the edges of a square. All right, so the the result that we get for this case here. Let me make sure, yeah, he has this in a vector format, okay. Um, it's a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Okay, and then he has 2 lambda L. And then, again, I'm using this zeta to avoid confusion, confusion or curse of Z, or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a zeta squared plus L squared. This is under a square root. Okay, and this is in the, well, I'll call it in the zeta hat direction. All right, so just pointing up, uh, up this way. All right, and that makes sense because if you look at this half of the line charge, I didn't quite draw it perfectly symmetric, but it will the horizontal components will cancel. So whatever horizontal component uh, from this side of the line charge will cancel out with the horizontal component from the other side. So it will just be in the straight up uh, zeta hat direction. Let me draw that in real quick. Okay, so that's just going up like this. All right, so how do we translate this into this case? Well, there are two main parts to this. Um, uh, one of them is that this zeta is not equal to this z, right? Because I'll draw it on this side because we're, um, it might be a little bit more. Well, uh, let me draw it on the front side. So we're talking about a z, uh, a distance zeta that will come up uh, at an angle, right? So it's not the same distance as this z that comes up perpendicularly. So it comes up from this angle up to this point. So let's go ahead and call this length zeta because that's the same length that we'll be using in this formula here. The other thing that we need to sort out, which is not a big deal, is uh, that instead of 2L, we are going to be using A. These uh, segments here are of length A, um, whereas here he used 2L. So uh, those are the two main uh, parts that we have to worry about. Um, and the, okay, there's one more thing, and that is, again, that in this situation, the horizontal components will cancel. So the, if we look at the electric field from this segment right here, this zeta hat direction, right, would be pointing up at an angle through this point. So if you just draw a line, just like I drew this line on the front, um, the electric field from this front segment right here 
will be pointed right along this line once we get up to the point. So if you decompose that into, uh, so it's originally in the zeta hat direction, if you compose, decompose it into z hat, which is straight up along uh, perpendicular to this square, and then uh, some horizontal component, that horizontal component will cancel out from uh, with the, the horizontal component of the field from the other side. So that's another thing that we have to, to worry about. All right, so um, basically what this amounts to, if I, if I draw a kind of a side view of this picture right here, so here we have our z uh, distance up from the center of the loop. didn't quite draw this to scale, but here's our uh, zeta. All right, so at this corner, you can picture this uh, line charge of A going into the page. And then this is just the angle we'll call theta um, from that line charge up to this point P up here. What's the length of this side? Well, it's half of one of these uh, side, so it's A over 2. All right. So if I were to just, I don't know if I can sketch this in very well, but if I were to just draw this in, here's kind of how this would fit into our, into our square. We're just looking at this one side here, and, the, and that's, that's where the angles fit in. All right, so to find only the vertical component from this from this one side, we need to uh, multiply by the sine of this angle, um, which is just the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is just z over zeta. All right, so what we're going to do is our total electric field, we'll break these down into pieces later. Um, we have a factor of four because there are four sides. We'll have a factor uh, that just picks out the vertical component along the z hat direction. So I'll write that this sine theta is, is just a z over zeta. All right. So that so this one multiplies by four to take care of the four sides. This one only picks out the vertical component. And then we need uh, the, the electric field from just one of these sides. Okay. Um, and I guess I, I shouldn't put a, a, a vector sign on this because we're just taking the magnitude. We, we're already taking care of the direction when we pick out the vertical component. So this will just be in the z hat direction. So the magnitude multiplied by this sine theta gives us the vertical component. All right, so here's our answer. We just need to figure out what E1 is and zeta and all this stuff, and, and then we'll be good. So uh, let's work on translating uh, the example 2.2 uh, solution into the parameters of our, of our new problem over here. So our question is, what is E sub 1? All right, well, this 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is not going to change. Uh, I'm going to take this 2L and replace it by A. So up here on top, we just have a lambda A. And for now, let's just keep the zetas real quick. We'll just save on space. This is a zeta. Okay, now um, this L needs to be replaced by A over 2. So divide both sides by 2 on this little conversion, and we're good to go. So A divided by 2 squared. All right. And then we're not going to worry about the direction, because like we already talked about, we take care of that with, when we pick up the horizontal component, or the vertical component. We're just looking at the magnitude of this. And uh, our main concern is the distance, because uh, the electric field will depend on the 
on the, on the inverse square of the distance. All right, so here's the magnitude of that. Let's uh, just plug in uh, zeta. So we know just from this triangle right here that we can find zeta. And it's just a over 2 squared plus z squared all under a square root. Okay, so I think um, we should be able to just plug this in and then simplify it down as much as we can and then we'll have our answer. So we're looking at, we are now looking back at this equation right here. And uh, so I'm going to, we have a 4, we have a z, and then a zeta on the bottom, so that's this thing. z squared plus a over 2 squared under a square root. Now we just plug in this uh, magnitude right here and then put it in the z hat direction and we're good. Um, so we have a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We have a lambda a. Now let's go ahead and plug in our, our zeta. So we get it all in terms of a and z, um, the terms of problems asked in those terms. So um, a over 2 plus z squared, okay, under square root. So that's this zeta right here. And then I'll put this in parentheses. Let's go ahead and put our z hat vector on here before we forget. All right, so now we want uh, uh, zeta squared, which is just z squared plus a over 2 squared, and then we have another uh, a over 2. Okay, and this was all under a square root, so I'm putting this to the 1 half power right here. And so let's just simplify it down and we'll be good to go. Um, let's go ahead and keep this as a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught just because sometimes it's good to have that constant all separated out. Um, so what am I seeing? I'm seeing a lambda, z, and an a on top. Uh, these two uh, square roots will give us a... Oh, and there's a 4 here too, right? Which we could cancel out with this 4, but we're keeping this part separate. These two will combine into a z squared plus a over 2 squared. And then we have uh, this thing under a square root, which we may have room to write under a square root, um, which uh, this will just turn into an a squared over 2. And yeah, we'll put that under a square root. OK, and we'll remember this is in the z hat direction. So here is the total electric field that we we're searching for. This is the answer to the problem um, right here. Uh, this is the total electric field for uh, at this point caused by this uh, square loop of wire. So real quick, uh, let's just take a look at uh, some limits, or at least one. So um, let's do this up here in this corner. So suppose uh, this point gets very far away from this loop of wire. Well, we should see that it will collapse to basically look like a, a point charge of um, charge 4 lambda A because there are four sides, charge density of lambda and length A. All right, so let me write, put a little box up here. So for Z much, much greater than A, uh, really all that happens is we take out these A terms uh, down here. So um, what, what do we get? Um, so we still have a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We have a 4 lambda A. And there's a Z up here too, but that will cancel out. 
with one of these downstairs. So in this lar in this approximation here, we can disregard the a's downstairs. So what we just have is a z squared multiplied by the square root of z squared, which is just z. So we have a z cubed on the bottom, and then there was a z on the top. So we end up with just a z squared on the bottom. Okay, and that's in the z hat direction. So here we go. We have, um, in this approximation, um, we just have the distance squared on the bottom, and this is exactly like a point charge with total charge of 4 lambda a, which, just like we talked about, would be the total charge on this loop. Uh, linear charge density lambda, and then 4a is the total length of, of, of charge in this, in this loop. So in, in this uh, approximation, we recover the, the point charge electric field.